This is Focal Point with Brian Fisher on AFR Talk. Listen to the audio podcast or download today's program at AFR.net. You can also read Brian Fisher's columns at onenewsnow.com. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us anytime at focal point at AFR.net. Focal point at AFR.net. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Really enjoyed my conversation with Chad Connolly, who is the director of Faith Outreach. Let me make sure I've got the exact title. He's the National Director for Faith Engagement for the Republican National Committee for the Republican Party. So that's good. Uh, that's good because the Republican National Committee realizing that we are losing evangelicals. We're not, they're not turning out to vote. They're not supporting our candidates. We need to connect with them. We need to engage with them. So this is a very, very good news. They are reaching out uh, to us. That's what that conversation was really all about. That was Chad Connolly speaking on behalf of the party, reaching out to the evangelical community seeking to connect with us and seeking information and uh, support. So I think the good news is we're going to have in Chad Connolly, we'll have a man that we can take our concerns to. His door is open and we've got his ear and we can register our uh, con- concerns, as I sought to do, our concerns about marriage, our concerns about uh, immigration, able to express those to him and trust that at some level those, are gonna get, those concerns are going to get uh, passed on to those in leadership. Number to call if you want to uh, give me your reactions to Chad Connolly's, my interview with him, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. And I'm guessing, you know, I'm particularly looking for evangelicals. We have a lot of different faith traditions that listen to this program. But I'm particularly, well, it doesn't really, just anybody that's a part of the community of faith. Uh, specifically, uh, evangelicals, I'm mostly interested in your reaction. What you think, what, were you satisfied with what you heard from from Chad Connolly, did it um, did it kind of leave you where you where you are right now in terms of your enthusiasm for the Republican Party? Did it kind of move you toward the Republican Party, or did what you hear uh, make you less enthused about the Republican Party? So I want to hear your reaction to what Chad uh, Chad Connolly had to say in my conversation with him. Triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's grab clip number one, Rob. Let's start with that. Uh, because, you know, what I was talking with Chad Connolly about is, look, the thing that, that we're concerned about is that the Republican Party is abandoning us on social issues. Now, Reince Priebus showed up at the March for Life this year. I commended him for that. It's the first time anybody from the Republican Party officially has shown up at the March for Life. So that was good. That was a big step forward. And we need to, you know, honor where honor is due and praise where praise is due. I honor him for for doing that. But the Republican Party will lose in 2016 if they don't understand how important the social issues are to evangelical conservatives, that these are non-negotiables for us. A strong stance on natural marriage, a strong stance on the sanctity of life, absolute non-negotiables. We're just not, and and I think this is increasingly going to be true. You know, we're seeing some of that in Mississippi right now where a lot of people are pretty, pretty disenchanted with the GOP establishment. Uh, and thinking pretty seriously about not even showing up to vote in November or voting for the other guy or voting the write-in guy because they are so disenchanted with what they see coming from the Republican Party establishment. And I, I'm not sure the GOP understands how thin the ice is under their feet right now. I, I just think social conservatives, I think we're done being taken for granted. I think we're done being talked down to. I think we're done being patronized. I think we're done being patted on the head. I think we're done being, I I think we're done with the Republican party just assuming that we've got no other place to go. So they don't have to take us seriously. They don't have to take our concerns seriously because they believe that when it gets to November, that they, that that we're, we're going to punch the lever for the R's. Uh, No matter how much attention they pay to us, no matter how far they stray from our values, because they think we've got no place else to go. Where are you going to go? I think is the, is the attitude on the part of a lot in the GOP elites. And I think increasingly uh, the social conservatives are saying there's a lot of other places we can go. We can write in a third uh, party candidate or we can go bowling. We have a lot of options on election night. So I I think, and and here's an example. This is Chris Christie, you know, talking about Republicans retreating from social issues. And I will guarantee you if this guy gets the nomination in 2016. This guy, 
Chris Christie gets the nomination in 2016, evangelicals are going to stay home by the boatload. Now he gets he gets teed up here. Chris Christie gets asked gets asked a softball question by Joe Kernan at CNBC about this Hobby Lobby ruling which at its heart was a ruling on the sanctity of life. Tremendous win for the sanctity of life. Tremendous win for religious liberty. So Joe Kernan asked Chris Christie, as a guy that wants to be our presidential nominee in 2016, the Republican nominee, asked him a question about the uh, whole issue of social issues. A lot of people want to just keep the government out of the bedroom. I'd like to talk to you about corporate, uh, corporate tax reform and so forth. Uh, but... Uh, I'd like to talk about all the things that the Republican Party used to know how to do and used to know how to talk about, and now they get bogged down and look at what we talked with Romney about during the entire election. None of those things. So Joe Kern and CNBC, look, this has got to be about economics. It's got to be about size of government. It's got to be about regulation. We've got to get away from these pesky social issues. Here is Governor Chris Christie, who fancies himself a pro-life guy. Here's his response. I'd like to talk about corporate tax reform. I'd like to talk about entitlement reform. I'd like to talk about all the things that the Republican Party used to know how to do and used to know how to talk about and now they get bogged down and look look at what look at what the what we talked about with Romney during the entire election. None Joe, of those things. Joe, listen, that part of that is the fault of the candidate. If you allow yourself to get bogged down, then you're going to get bogged down. The fact is that I'm, I'm the first pro-life governor in the history but of the state of New Jersey. You're pro-life, but you'd stay out of, of the, and states can... But I'm pro-life. So well, you're well, saying the social issues bog you down. I'm pro-life. It didn't bog me down. Well, I got you, you, you want to take away the right to choose from women? Because I took other issues like the ones you talked about, right. and that's why I spent most of my well, time Do you think about, a Republican candidate should run on taking away the right to the choose from women? The Republican candidate should tell people what they feel on issues that people ask you about. If you get asked a question, answer it. That's all. You're and then like, let people what would you do in terms of what we've been talking about this morning, just the ruling that came down from the Supreme Court yesterday? Uh, was the Supreme Court right in its decision? Who knows? Is the Supreme Court right? I, I mean, you know, the fact is that when you're, when you're an executive, your Supreme Court makes a ruling, and you've got to live with it unless you can get the legislative body to change the law or change the Constitution. The point is, is like, why should I give an opinion on whether they're right or wrong? In the end of the day, they did what they did. That's now the law of the land, unless people in the elected branches try to change it. This is the way you get bogged down in those things. You know what? I don't think that's the most central issue that we need to talk about this morning. So that's Chris Christie. says he's pro-life, but then he asks, is asked specific questions, and all he keeps saying is, I'm pro-life. You know, and at one point in that interview, he says, tell people what they feel on issues that people ask you about. If you get asked a question, answer it. So they keep asking him these questions, and he comes back with this mantra, I'm pro-life. I'm pro-life. I'm pro-life. Think you had a campaign on taking away a woman's right to choose. I'm pro-life. Uh, do you think that the Supreme Court was right on Hobby Lobby? I'm pro-life. I don't want to get bogged down. So he just dodges the very questions that he just got through saying you got to give people a straight answer, and he does not give us a straight answer on these issues. Now, what that tells me is tremendous opportunity here. I mean, he, he's just teed up on Hobby Lobby. Do you think they were right? This is an opportunity for a genuine social conservative to say absolutely they were right. Absolutely, the Supreme Court was right. Absolutely, the Supreme Court was right to protect the sanctity of life and to protect the religious liberty and the conscience convictions of Christian-run businesses. Absolutely, they were right. This is consistent with the First Amendment. This is consistent with the classic American values of religious liberty, protecting freedom of conscience. This was a fantastic decision uh, for America. My kudos to the Supreme Court. Instead, he says, I don't know if they were right. Who knows if they were right? I have no idea if they were right or not. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just telling you, this is exhibit A of what I was just talking about with Chad Connolly. I mean, Chris Christie is one of the guys that the GOP poobahs, they like this guy partly because he's so, he's so waffly on the social issues. That's what they want. They think the social issues are pesky. They're a problem. I mean, the RNC even left it off its questionnaire. You know, they didn't put it on their questionnaire. Do you want marriage on your party platform? Left it off. So they want to, it seems to me like the GOP is trying to get away from these social issues, kind of pay lip service to it. Yeah, I'm pro-marriage. Yeah, I'm pro-life. But then when push comes to shove, uh, you, you, you can't get straight answers for them. So I think if we get Chris Christie in uh, 2016, you know, I think that's going to be problematical. I think it's going to be Mitt Romney. Only I think Chris Christie is probably less uh, vocal or ha has fewer convictions on 
social issues even than Mitt Romney did. So we'll see what people think about that. Anyway, let's go to the phones, 888-589-8840, asking what you thought about my conversation with Chad Connolly, here to establish a bridge with the evangelical community. Maybe your reaction to what you just heard from Chris Christie, what's going to happen in 2016. Let's go to the phones. Uh, let's triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. If you want to get in the queue, triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's go to Robin in Hickory, North Carolina. Robin, welcome. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. Um, I'm. <laughs> I heard that Mr. Conley on Sandy Rios yesterday. Uh huh. And I'm sorry, I'm just, the Republican Party really has almost lost a lot of their people. I, because when I was listening to him talk, I thought, this guy's just a patsy. I'm sorry, hold you a I'm working in a very noisy place today. Uh, Robin, we got some back. They've shown us what they're going to do. I remember uh, their lack of support for Todd Aiken. Um, instead of coming out and trying to support him, and I, I don't believe it. They are running as fast as they can away from social issues, and I really think Mr. Conley's just a little patsy to get out and try to convince us to stay with the Republican Party. But I, I, you, I think you covered it really well. I just don't believe them. I don't believe anything they say. Hmm. Uh, you hear about, you hear John Boehner is at the White House or telling, talking to the president about um, immigration or saying, oh, well, we're going to try to get something done, or we're not going to try to get something done, or we're going to try to get something done. It's, and I've talked to my congressman. I call him two or three times a week, and he is the conservative. And I tell, I tell him, I'm just sick of it. I just mess at the border. What have they done? They're not even making sure their constituents know about all of that. John Boehner's not out. I mean, yeah, he mentions it, and he's ticked off about it, but it, it's just ridiculous. I, this morning I was listening to the, the report from Todd Starnes about the the kids at the border and the diseases they're bringing in and the people being told they cannot talk about it. And I'm really, I was just, I was so upset. I feel like our country is really on its last leg. I really do. I feel like we're just being swamped and overran. And I think it's only going to get ramped up over the next two years with Obama in there. And I feel like the Republican Party is really not doing a whole lot mm. to try to combat it. They're only trying to keep their jobs. And this mess in Mississippi just shows you yeah. How the Republican leadership is going to do, and for them to leave marriage, not even to put it in the question on the platform, is ridiculous. And that's all I wanted to say. All right, Robin. Listen, thank you very much for the call. Triple eight five at nine eight eight four zero number to call if you want to weigh in. We'll take some more calls in the next segment, and I'll give you an update on the McDaniel situation that Robin was just uh, talking about. Uh, Senator Cochran going to hold a press conference here in about fifteen minutes, so we'll try to keep an eye on uh, what comes uh, out of that. But I'll give you the latest update, what we know. Uh, about what's going on there. Be right back. Focal Point AFR Talk. Few words offer more peace and